With recent trends in urbanization, we're now seeing people in cities turning to growing their own food. This shift towards urban agriculture has been an area of great interest for researchers. It's a relatively new phenomenon, so of course it's worth pondering if it's any better than rural farming. We've seen plenty of studies diving into the intricacies of urban agriculture, and this one now conducted by postdoc research associate Florian Payen reveals some interesting details. Let's get into it. To start off, what exactly is urban agriculture? Because it's something that hasn't gained much traction, we know some of you might be wondering what exactly is urban agriculture. When most of us hear the word agriculture, we immediately think of wide fields of crops with farmers gathering their harvests. Well, that's rural farming for you, and it's now considered pretty much conventional in the field of agriculture. The thing is, agriculture is a vast field. We've seen technology advance in recent years, and as lifestyles evolve, we see innovation in a lot of fields. The same holds true for agriculture, which brings us back to today's topic of interest, urban agriculture. In extremely simple words, urban agriculture refers to a type of farming where food is grown, processed, and distributed in and around urban areas, mostly towns and cities. Since it's a growing area of study right now, we don't have any clear-cut type of urban farming. For the sake of simplicity, though, we divide urban agriculture to include two main things, gardens and city farms. Urban farming has led to the possibility of a community-based approach to food production. In this way, people have access to a sustainable and resilient food system that offers protection against issues like food insecurity and inaccessibility. By continuing research in this area, we can only hope to develop a model for urban agriculture that yields the most benefits. Moving on, there's a new study exploring the benefits of urban agriculture. Lead author of a new study, Florian Payen, discussed how despite urban agriculture's increasing popularity, there's not been much research on what food production and crop yields look like in this field. Working with his team, Payen was able to collect data from 53 different countries in order to find out which area prefers growing which crops, what kind of methods they use in these cities, and the various kinds of places they utilize for urban agriculture. So far, the biggest finding has been that urban areas possess greater agronomic suitability. What's more, the study also demonstrated that urban agriculture yields can be the same and in some circumstances even greater than yields obtained through conventional farming. Of course, when considering these results, you have to keep in mind that due to the very diverse nature of urban farming and the multiple different growing systems being utilized, yields can bear significant differences from one urban space to another. Now, is urban agriculture more useful than conventional farming? The meta-analysis conducted by Payen and his team shows us that the urban agriculture has incredible potential when it comes to food production. When compared with conventional farming, urban agriculture yields can be at par or even more than rural agricultural yields yields. We were pretty intrigued by this variation in yields between urban and rural farming, and well, according to the study, the reason behind it is most crops grown through urban farming are produced inside controlled environments. A controlled environment is one where crops are protected against extreme weather conditions, pests, and various diseases. No wonder, then, we find such a contrast between the yields. Also, we can't deny the fact that you've got great opportunities for innovative techniques when it comes to urban farming. By incorporating these strategies, urban farmers are able to significantly increase not only the yield of their crops, but also their quality. For example, it's much more feasible to practice vertical farming in urban spaces. In this way, farmers can control the various factors that affect a crop's yield. Through controlled temperatures, hydroponics, and the use of artificial lighting, there's a substantial increase in yield. What's more, the study observed that in urban farming, the labor involved is mainly manual. This replacement of mechanical labor with manual labor provides for a higher cropping density. You can't achieve that with a machine-managed system that's found in conventional farms. Next, the study focuses two types of urban spaces. The researchers came up with two broad categories of urban spaces, gray spaces and green spaces. As the name itself suggests, green spaces refer to the urban areas where food production takes place in vegetated areas such as parks, gardens, yards, and urban farms. We've also got natural environments such as forest, coastal areas, and the areas of wilderness. Now, let's talk about the gray spaces. These include primarily four areas, facades, grounds, indoor spaces, and rooftops. Facades refers to spaces where food is grown on a building's facade, such as green walls and balconies. Next, we've got grounds. Okay, this one's basically any space where the food's not produced on or within a building. But at the same time, it shouldn't be a green space. Examples of grounds include vacant 
parking lots, brownfields, religious spaces, and roadsides. The third gray space on the list is any indoor space. It's pretty obvious this would include areas of urban farming around within enclosed spaces such as growth chambers and plant factories. What's more, it also includes food grown privately in apartments and houses. Finally, we have rooftops. The three main examples of this are rooftop gardens, rooftop farms, and rooftop integrated greenhouses. But the trouble is we don't have enough data on urban agricultural yields. The element of difficulty that most researchers run into when calculating urban agricultural yields is that almost always, it's hard to precisely state how much food cities can produce for themselves. Right now, we do know that almost 15-20% to 20 of global food is produced in cities. In order to understand how urban farming works and the many ways it could provide communities with food security, it's incredibly important to have a good data set so we can make proper plans about how to utilize a city's urban spaces and maximize food production via these spaces. This absence of data regarding a city's food production potential comes in the way of developing effective urban agricultural systems. Without the necessary statistics, we're unable to develop such systems. And that's not all. There's the fact that we have to factor in environmental costs. For now, it's uncertain if urban farming leaves a smaller or greater carbon footprint when compared with conventional farming. We also have to consider how pollution impacts the quality of food grown in cities. There's not any research on that either. Now, in other agricultural news, how global vertical farming could be worth almost $22 billion by 2030. An exclusive report by Insight Ace Analytics reveals that the global vertical farming market in nine years would be worth a total of $21.99 billion. Right now, this same market's estimated to be worth around $4.08 billion. Vertical farming is the latest innovation in agriculture. It utilizes the concepts of indoor farming and controlled environments in order to tightly monitor the factors that major affect food growth and production. The foods grown in vertical spaces like shipping containers, abandoned factories, and skyscrapers. The best part about this is how the strangest of places are utilized to grow food. Through vertical farming, a huge amount of food can be produced in the smallest of spaces. With increased food demands, we'll be seeing a rise in vertical farming in the near future and these numbers only suggest how the revenue for global vertical farming is going to keep growing. Next up, this is how drones can contribute to sustainable farming. Really, it's no surprise that we're seeing all kinds of innovative technologies being applied to farming right now. The latest one is the use of drones to make farming more sustainable. As populations increase, so does the demand for food. And to meet these demands as quickly as possible, we're seeing farming giants and individual farmers resort to intelligent farming practices to increase food production. With drone technology, farmers are able to have access to accurate data about their fields. Drones can also provide 3D models of farming sites. What's more, farmers can get information about soil conditions, plant diseases, and irrigation issues. All of this helps them have better crop yields, and that's how we move a step further towards making farming more sustainable. And finally, the UK government invested 16.5 million euros in agritech research and development. The UK government's Farming Innovative Program is investing a total of £16.5 million into research and development in agricultural technology. Most of the funding is going into research that focuses on feasibility projects. Minister of Farming Innovation Steve Double believes that the UK is in dire need of converting great research ideas into practical solutions that are applicable to agriculture. They are not just focusing on increasing food production, they are looking to see how to support healthy soils, produce abundant pollinators, and have access to healthy water sources. With such funding, the food sector is motivated to develop innovative agriculture techniques which led to sustainable methods of food production. That's a wrap for this video. Interested in hearing about the latest innovations in agriculture? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.